next up, we're going to switch to um, a different end user. Alex Rubin's going to come up and join me uh, from Kaiser Permanente and talk a little bit about the work they've been doing with Cloud Foundry. Come on up, Alex. Excellent sun choice. Thank you. <laughs> Have a seat. Alex, thank you so much for joining us this week from Kaiser. I know Kaiser has has been coming to Summit for a long time and is a long time Cloud Foundry user, but it's great to have you join us on stage. Thanks for having me. It's always great to be here. Um, I know that I've learned a lot this week from, from, from users like yourself talking about your journey and the work that you've done. And, and I'm excited you can come up on stage and share a little bit of that with the audience here. First, tell us a little bit about what you do at Kaiser. Yeah, so first, um, let me talk to folks a little bit about who Kaiser Permanente is. So Kaiser Permanente is one of the top 10 largest integrated healthcare providers in the US. Uh, we operate 39 hospitals, uh, around 670 medical offices and outpatient facilities. Uh, we serve 11.8 million members and we have over 210,000 employees. And we are hiring. So, <laughs> so I think um, now is a good time to uh, play a, a quick video to give you guys a little bit more perspective here. When you have doctors working as a team for your health, you get the care you need to help you thrive. Visit kp.org to learn more. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Yeah. So one of the key things for us is member engagement. And um, we want to make sure that we can reach out to members, that we're there and not just when things aren't so good and uh, people you know, have to get care, but also when things are great, right? And when you feel great, uh, we want to be there with you. We want to help with tips on healthy eating, exercise, et cetera, right? All the good things that uh, you hear and you, you, you know you should do. Uh, we want to be providing a, a personalized contextual experience to our members. And uh, that's key for us. So in my job, I'm working as part of the CTO office. And uh, I talk to many different teams within Kaiser Permanente, uh, helping them understand what our platform offers internally for folks who want to develop these cloud native applications and uh, who want to provide this type of you know, systems of engagement and this type of experience to our members uh, across different channels, be it mobile, social, you know, web. Um, and so you know, not only engaging with them kind of from early proof of concepts and all the way through the production, but also you know, doing lessons learned and understanding what capabilities they need to be able to better build you know, as they go forward. So you know, it's always exciting to be here and see what's going on in the community and how that can be leveraged. Yeah, absolutely. And as a, as a Kaiser customer, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the mobile app uh, <laughs> and, and a lot of the work that, that Kaiser does proactively. How, um, you know, you've been using Cloud Foundry now for a couple of years. Has that had an impact in broader Kaiser in terms of the way you approach technology, but also we've talked a lot this week about, talked a lot this week about the feedback loop between the customer and the technology. How is, have you incorporated that into your process and what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when we started out, we, we uh, selected uh, IBM Cloud as one of our providers for uh, Cloud Foundry uh, distribution. And we've been kind of on the journey with them. Um, and, and you know they've been providing us with capabilities for, from the runtime perspective, but also for the services. So one of the key things for us is being able to leverage services and being able to develop quickly. Um, and, and that means that you know, there's got to be some choice in terms of what types of capabilities like SQL database, NoSQL database, queuing, et cetera, right? What, what are all the different components that you need to build out an application. And as we got more comfortable with you know, kind of developing and as we have a, a broader set of services that we can choose from, um, I think we weren't from just writing workforce applications, so smaller applications that you know, is just internally used to a, you know, larger applications that can be utilized by members. So you know, one of the big projects we're undergoing right now is we're taking a premier site that you've seen in the commercial, kp.org, where it's traditionally a monolithic application. And we're taking and refactoring that into components 
into different microservices that are going to be running on top of the um, Cloud Foundry. So it's pretty exciting, and you know that of course means a culture change as well because you know the the number of deploys that you can do and how fast you have to move uh, to really you know manage all of this. And, and, and the innovation around it that people now are able to achieve, that they're able to dream up these things and you know, very quickly uh, plug and unplug different components. It, it provides a whole lot of uh, capabilities for us to innovate. So that's, that's exciting and excited to see a company the size of, of Kaiser. I mean, Kaiser is really big. How many employees are in Kaiser? 210 plus thousand. So 210,000 people and really bringing that level of iteration and continuous delivery and innovation is is a is a pretty complicated endeavor. Yeah. Um, how big, just uh, for uh, some of the audience here, how big is the the deployments that you're looking at now, and how how what are we talking about in terms of size? What did, the theme of this event is running at scale. Let's, let's talk yeah. a little bit about the size of the deployment. Absolutely. So you know we started out with just a few applications, like four to six applications running in production. You know now we've scaled to you know over 100 applications in our production environment. And you know, non-prod, we have a thousand applications, so 10x, and you know, we're expecting more non-prod and that pipeline to move to production, uh, which is really exciting. And we have over 800 developers who are wow. you know, writing code for Cloud Foundry and deploying to Cloud Foundry, kind of day in and day out. So it's a pretty, it, it, it's pretty amazing to see how quickly it picked up and you know how excited everyone is to use it. So thank you. That's phenomenal. Have you? You know, obviously, 800 is a lot smaller than the 200,000, 210,000 employees. Have you seen an impact that that has had on the broader organization? You know, the way that you're really reflecting that innovation and that cycle back in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's a lot of it is you know us going out there and talking to folks, and like I said, different lines of business. Um, a lot of it is also just word of mouth, really, right? So you know, we have some some. You know, one day I got contacted by a doctor and he said, hey, I'd like to write an app and a mobile app uh, to, to be able to you know, interact with my coworkers. You know, things get very busy sometimes. We don't see each other. Can I just put something together and deploy it? Oh, right? sure, let's do it. And right? so it's, it, yeah, it's contagious. Which is, I, and I've heard that over and over, a theme from some of the other end users, like Comcast and others. But it's so, it's so awesome to hear that that's happening across multiple industries, and it's not just one either a technology company or, or retail. This is happening everywhere, and that's it's so amazing to see that happening at a healthcare company. Yep. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here, Alex. Um, but what is one tip? That you would give to to end users just starting this journey. One thing that you would say, hey, if I had to do it all over again, uh, I might would think about this first. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I, I think one key thing is expect change, right? So I, I think people tend to think that, yeah, hey, I'm just going to go to cloud. It's going to solve all my problems, and and that is true. It does solve a lot of problems, but it, it's different, right? And you have to embrace the change and. You have to work within the organization to to drive the change and help help things grow. Right. That's so. awesome. All right, I hate to interrupt you, but we're going to interrupt our programming for um, a quick video. We're going to live stream one of uh, we have an important moment in our community today, and we wanted to showcase that Pivotal is going to be IPOing and right now. So we're going to live stream them ringing the bell. This is an important opportunity for us to showcase. This is an important moment for us in the community and for Cloud Foundry in particular. This began with Pivotal, contributing, and originally contributing the code, but it also represents the momentum that Cloud Foundry has in the marketplace and the potential that that brings. And for us, we look at this as an op a really amazing validation of the power that Cloud Foundry brings to the table. So we're going to watch the B-roll for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is.
we're on. Hey guys, welcome to the New York Stock Exchange. An exciting morning as we welcome Pivotal to the New York Stock Exchange. We're surrounded by all your employees. Just get it started down here. My name is Ryan Green, and I'm joined by my colleague. My name is Ron Bowler, and we're going to be bringing you the play-by-play -play as we watch Pivotal on their first day of trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Now listen, we may be taking breaks throughout the morning because I'm up 3-2 to Ron, and he doesn't like losing, so we may be cutting it here a little bit to get back to our game here. But guys, a momentous occasion. Your management team just rang the opening bell, and on an average day, Ron, it's the single most beautiful. Awesome. Congratulations to Pivotal. You know, this is really important for us as a community and, and again for Cloud Foundry because they're the first company to IPO with Cloud Foundry as part of the portfolio. I feel like, uh, you know, IBM, SAP, there's still an opportunity for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist that joke. All good. I keep practicing my jokes and everyone's like, no, no more jokes, Abby. <laughs> But Alex, you know, I really appreciate you coming up here today and letting us also interrupt with uh, the live stream. But, it, you know, I'm really excited about the work that Kaiser has been doing the last couple of years, and we're excited to see so much more from Kaiser, uh, both in the community, but also in the platform in the coming years. Absolutely. So, Alex, thank you so much for joining me on stage and for thank hanging you. out for the live stream. Appreciate thank you, it. Alex. All right. See you.